keeping on my teaching about attitude. And today, once again, I say attitude is a little thing that makes a big difference. I hope you've been reading your little cards that I gave you a little while back, but let me remind you of what they said. Micah 6, 8. He has shown you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And beloved, the truth is, if we do those things, we will always walk in peace, and we will always have pleasantness in our lives. So let's turn this morning to Matthew, the 26th chapter. Matthew 26, and I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Matthew 26, reading from verse 6. Now, when Jesus came back to Bethany and was in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask or an alabaster box of very per precious perfume, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at table. Verse 8, And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, For what purpose is all this waste? For this perfume might have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, fully aware of this, said to them, Why do you bother this woman? She has done a noble, praiseworthy, and beautiful thing for me. For you always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this perfume on my body, she has done something to prepare me for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this good news of the gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will be told also in memory of her. In memory of her. Can you imagine this little woman is in heaven and someday you and I are going to see her. And she's going to be the one that Jesus will point to and say, that's the lady that poured the oil on me from the alabaster flask. And you and I will look at her and say, we read about you in the scriptures in the year uh, 20, uh, where are we, 18, 2018. But we never thought we would see you looking so beautiful. I'm very serious about what I'm saying, beloved. There is going to be so, so much beauty in heaven, so much awesomeness. So it'll take eternity after eternity, eternity to eternity to go through all the wonderful, glorious things that are laid up for you and I. The Lord said his, that was his very words. The things that I have laid up for you in heaven, you have no idea. And so this little woman... Her name is still spoken from pulpit to pulpit all over this earth. We don't know her name, but she was just the woman with the alabaster box. But can you imagine that small, you, would, you and I would look at that as a small token, but to Jesus, it was a big thing. You know why? Because Jesus saw that it came from her heart. That is the whole crux of giving. That is the whole point of being a Christian. Don't ever give of yourself, of your time, of your prayers, of your money, if you feel that you have to. It should be because you want to. And Jesus is, is have, he's still doing memorials all over this world. And beloved, I am positive certain that when we get to glory, we're going to see people that are elevated in the things of God that we would never have believed in a million years. Because they are behind the scenes. And what they do, they do unto the Lord. Because they love the Lord. So, we see the story here of this woman. Jesus was in the house in Bethany. And she came to him, and she anointed him with this oil, a very costly fragrance. She poured it over his head. This woman, beloved, loved the Lord. She had set 
her love upon him. And we started to say about attitude. You know, attitude might be a little thing, but it makes a big, big difference in your life. That's the title of my message. It will make your day every day, and you choose it. Believe me. But those who were present considered what she did as a great waste because the oil could have been sold to the amount equal to one year's wages and the money given to the poor instead. But Jesus' disciples, even though they were indignant, they said, why this waste? Jesus defended her. Jesus, in other words, he said, leave her alone. What he said was, why do you trouble this woman? In other words, who do you think you are? Are you going to tell this woman how to serve me? I don't think so. Why do you trouble this woman? For she has done a good work for me. Not only that, he accorded to her the highest honor when he added these words. Assuredly, in other words, you better believe it. It's going to happen. I say to you, wherever the gospel is going to be preached in this whole entire earth, this woman has done what, what she has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Jesus took the wrong attitude in his disciples and turned it around with love. Everything can be turned in your life when you learn love. You shouldn't really need to learn it because it's within you. God Almighty, when you were born again, put inside of you love. He poured it into you. That's why you love the things you once hated and hate the things you once loved. If you've had a true experience with God, you will experience that. I know it happened in my life, and I know it's happened in multitudes of you. So what he was simply saying, what Jesus was saying to them is, putting out another person's candle will never brighten your own. I'm going to say that again. Putting out another person's candle will never brighten your own. Take care of your own salvation with fear and trembling, the Scripture says. And beloved, this principle has never changed. 2,000 years have passed plus since this woman did this, never expecting in her wildest dreams that that one act of love would be told throughout the ages. Amazing. Many kings and rulers have come and they have gone. Their great acts have faded with them from the memories of men. But what that woman did for Jesus is still told today around this globe as a memorial to her. So when you and I get a revelation of how much Jesus loves you, you will set your love upon him. This was the key with her. The key was that she knew how much Jesus loved her. And she wanted to give him back just an easy, teensy, weeny, weeny bit, bit back to her. The little that she had, she wanted to give. Because she had the understanding of how much Jesus loved her. You see, when you act out of love for him, though others may see it as a waste of time, as a waste of energy, as a waste of money. He will defend you and deliver you from your critics because God keeps the books. He's got a wonderful memory. Believe me. Thank you, Jesus. He will also set you in high. Whatever, when you do to God, when you give the Lord your love, it doesn't matter who sees or who doesn't see. God sees. You'd be amazed at what goes on behind closed doors. I'm talking about good things. People that are praying night and day for this ministry. God has shown me people that are up half the night praying for me, praying for you. You know, things that no one but God sees. People that give uh, in this church. You have no idea what we've seen in, in offerings. Pennies. Just like, you know, the, the little woman that came up with the, the mite. God saw her and talked about her. 
Why? Because she gave that mite from her heart. And, you know, and, and if you can afford to give thousands of dollars, do it. If you can afford to do a dollar, do it. It's what comes from your heart. It's what comes from your heart, beloved. This is what God sees. He sees our hearts. So when you act out of love for him, oh, others may see it as a weakness. Others may see it as a waste of time. Don't you believe it? God will see you through. He will set you on high. If you have a ministry, your ministry will become more powerful. It will become more life-changing. Your work will, if you work in the workplace, wherever you do, your work will be highly esteemed above, among and above your peers. God will set you on high. You will find yourself getting, uh, getting raises, pay raises. You will find yourself getting uh, promotions. And you will just shake your head and say, where did that come from? I'm telling you where it come from where it came from. Favor is in your life. You're encompassed around with a great shield of favor. And we need to speak favor in our lives every single day of our lives. Because when we speak favor and we speak love and we speak gratitude and we speak thankfulness, our attitudes are good. But when we speak lack and we speak, oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this day. You won't. Oh, well, you'll make it through, but you'll be miserable and make everybody around you the same way. Hallelujah. That was just a little in there. So, it's not just, you don't just have a job, beloved. You have a position of influence to impact many lives. You say, well, how, what do you mean? I don't impact, oh, yes. Every single person in this room impacts somebody. And you would be amazed at how many people are watching your silent witness. You don't have to be running around with a 10-pound Bible and stickers all over the back of your car. People see Jesus in you. People hear Jesus in you. People are watching your lifestyle. They are seeing your sermon it, it, you know, you can talk so loud they can't hear you. But when they see you and they see your works and they will glorify your Father in heaven. Attitude may be a little thing, but it makes a big, big difference. So like this little woman, beloved, set your love upon Jesus. Make him the most important thing of your life. Make him the love of your life. Because no matter what relationship you're in, if Jesus is first, it'll be all right. If your spouse or your fiance or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whatever... If you both know Jesus, then that influence between the two of you will keep you right. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Jesus has to be in the core of your relationship. And when he's in the core, you will even find your attitude of gratitude and thankfulness. And you'll be grateful for the little things in life. I can tell you the truth, and it comes from my heart. I'm more grateful today to just be able to get up every morning pain-free. Are you hearing me? To be able to hear, to be able to see. I know I sound sometimes like, to you younger ones, oh, really, Pastor? No, someday you'll appreciate what I'm saying. Because we can take so much for granted. And as I said last week, we never miss the water till the well runs dry. You don't think about your health till you don't have it anymore. You don't think about your memory till you don't have it anymore. You don't think about your hearing. I, I get these things in the mail all the time. Uh, they're giving me these free seminars for hearing. There's nothing wrong with my ears. And I look at that thing and I pray for everybody else that there is something wrong with, whether it's through, you know, work-related. I know that was with Pastor Dave, you know, with his hearing and what have you. But I thank God for the little things in life. This is what I'm talking about. It makes a big, 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 big difference. It makes a difference to how you spend your day. 
When you wake up in the morning and you say, as Pastor Joe said this morning, good morning, Father, good morning, Jesus, good morning, Holy Spirit. I tell you, it's going to be hard for you to have a lousy day. Because you've already said hello to the three people in your life you needed to say hello to first to keep you in a good day. Well, hallelujah. Set your love upon Jesus. Make him the love of your life today. And he will defend, deliver, and set you on high. But remember this. Attitude is the most important decision you will make today. It really is. It'll make you or break you. And as I said a few weeks ago, to help you succeed, one, understand the love that God has for you. Just to remind yourself every morning, Father, thank you for your love. Father, thank you for your goodness. Father, thank you that I can get out of this bed. I'm not going to complain about what today is going to bring or who's going to call me or what's going to happen or how the job's going to go. Father, thank you for this day. I thank you that you're in control of this day. Understand the love that God has for you. But that's the main thing you can say first thing in the morning. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your unconditional love. See, we have, as human beings, beloved, we have conditional love. You know, it's, it's the filial love. I love you as long as you love me. I love you as long as you're nice to me. As long as you don't ignore me, I love you. No, no, no. We're talking about agape love. And that's the love of God that's been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. And you have that agape love in you. And you can love unconditionally. Don't tell me you can't, because I know better. The only difference is it's harder on your flesh. Amen. Hello. Understand, number one, the love that God has for you. Two, number two, show that love to others. Show that love to others. And number three, adjust your attitude along the way. If you do those things, you will never fail. Oh, you'll have your bad moments, you'll have your bad days, but you will not fail. At the end of the day, you will say, glory, hallelujah, one more time, Lord, you brought me through. Yeah. I just want to say, I'm sorry for my attitude, Lord. I'm sorry I kept those things in my heart. I'm sorry I didn't forgive quicker than I did. Yes. Why do you think God tells us to forgive quickly? Because it's for our own good. If you don't, inside of you will become a... Eh, that's the only way that I can put it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a root. Yes. The Bible says it's a root of bitterness that will, that will grow and grow and grow and spring up and defile many. Jesus. It's not just yourself you're defiling. It's other people around you when you have a bad attitude. An attitude of unforgiveness, an attitude of, of oh, hello, you know, just... D you know, well, nothing ever works for me. Really? You got out of bed today, you ate your breakfast, that worked. <laughs> Are you hearing today? Beloved, I have walked in these principles. I've walked in them for many, many, many years, and I thank God for these principles. I know that they are solid truths in God's Word, and they don't fail. In Philippians... 2.5, the Bible tells us, your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. So I've got a question for you. Do you think Jesus Christ ever had a lousy attitude? I don't think so. Even when he went into the temple and threw out the money changers, he did it all in love. They just knew his authority was there. That's all. He wasn't blaming them. I mean, he was blaming them. He said, you're a bunch of thieves and whitewashed sepulchs and all that other stuff, but... He was making his point with his authority. He still loved. He still loved every single person that he ever met on the face of this earth while he walked the face of this earth. The attitude that you and I start our day with is a great deal to do with the way your day will go. It really has. And it's called the love walk. It's called love never fails attitude. It's called the royal law of love. 
That's what Jesus was taught, what the Bible ta is talking about in Philippians 2, 5, when it says, let this attitude be in you that was in Christ Jesus. The royal law of love. There's an old statement, and you've probably heard it before, attitude is everything. And it truly is. This statement couldn't be more accurate, beloved. Our attitude is the one thing, listen carefully, our attitude is the one thing we control. Some of you will get that. Many things on this a day, daily basis is out of your control. But this is one thing that you control. You may not get to, to a say in everything that you do, but we can decide to have a good attitude. A bad situation, listen now, doesn't have to warrant a bad attitude. You can rise above it. You can be the one that's different. In your own life, you get to determine what kind of a day you're going to have. When you leave the church, it's wonderful. You know, you're with believers, you're in the presence of God and all these other things, but what happens when you leave the church? What happens when you're driving home? What is your thought life? Put, get every thought into captivity according to the Word of God. What do you do with, when, when there are things ha happen in your household? Do you scream and yell and go berserk like the person screaming and yelling back at you? Or do you stand and, and allow the peace of God to rule and make statements like, it's okay, I love you, forgive me. You'd be amazed at how your attitude will turn every single situation in that home around, including your children, your spouse, whatever. Even in your workplace, when people do things to you that annoy you, maybe, hey, the truth is, maybe stab you in the back to get your job. Guess what? Have my job. God's got a better one for me. Amen. And I've seen this happen over the years. People will think, well, why did God allow this? Two weeks later, they were in a better position because they adjusted their attitude. And they said, Lord, if you allowed this to happen, you've got something better. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In your own life, you get to determine... You have the power every single day. What kind of day you're going to have? You can wake up happy and hopeful or dreadful and depressed. It's up to you. And I'm not saying that situations in life don't take us there on occasion. Believe me, I understand. And I have apathy for many, many situations right with people I know listening to me right now. But what I'm saying to you is this you can overcome. You can at least make yourself and others around you feel better. You don't have to be, uh, you know, dreadful and depressed. And You can be happy and hopeful. Never, 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 never let anyone take your hope. Never let anyone take your hope, beloved. They don't have that right. Only God can control your life, and He uses you and your attitude to do it. Oh, hallelujah. The only way a negative situation can really bring your attitude down is if you let it. And again, I'm repeating, I'm not saying it's always going to be easy, because it's not. But if you start your day the right, with the right attitude, God will bless you. He will see you through. And yes, surely there are going to be times, there definitely will be, when things won't go your way. However, it's then that you have the power to change that. You have the power to believe the best despite the circumstances around you. The choice is yours. You either trust that God has a plan for your life or you don't. It's just that simple. Your attitude will indicate that trust level. I come back to some experiences in my own life, beloved, with some of the tragedies I've came through in life. And some of the times when I've said, God, like everyone in here, 
If you've lived any amount of time, you know what I'm talking about. You don't escape it. It's life. But so many times I've made the statement, Lord, why? I don't get it. Why? Well, I either trust God or I don't. I either trust that God's got a plan for my life or I don't. Are you hearing me? This verse that I just quoted tells us that we should have the same attitude as Christ Jesus. Do you think he ever had a bad attitude? I don't think so. No way. He had an attitude that displayed confidence. He was a man on a mission, and he didn't let the circumstances around him get to him. See, all of these things that are happening around you, let them happen. It's when they get inside of you, that's when you have to say, no, 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 no. I am not allowing this to rule my life. I believe God. I'm going to stand on the promises of God. I'm going to be faithful to God. I'm going to do everything I know to do within my power. And the power within you says you can make or break your day. You can do it. I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you to have an attitude of hope. I want you to encourage you to have an attitude of expectancy. An expectant heart. When we come to the church, when we come to gather ourselves as believers, we need to come expecting God to move. Amen. We need to come saying, God, I'm going to set my heart like a, a, like a flint, and I'm going to just, I'm, I'm going to hear your voice through pastor today or whoever's in this pulpit. I'm going to hear your voice, Lord. I came believing to hear from you. I came believing. And God will not disappoint you. I want to encourage you today, beloved, to have an attitude that exhibits Christ. Wake up in the morning knowing it's going to be a good day. All things will happen. But you can change the circumstances or at least learn to live with them with a smile on your face. It takes nothing to smile. I know I was raised this way, and sometimes I get up here and I get to preaching like this, and I think, God, is anybody getting this? Because it's easy for me to say these things because I was raised this way. I was raised with a father that put up with no nonsense. No nonsense. When we sat at that table to eat, we ate every single thing on that plate and we didn't move till it was eaten. The only, ex the only exception would be if we were sick. That would be the only exception. And I know we've all heard it with the starving children in Africa. We know we've all heard that. But he didn't say that. He, he used to say, well, I'll say it in Scottish, and then I'll interpret it. This was Robert Burns, the great poet's words. Some hae meat and can eat, and some hae meat and want it, but we hae meat and we can eat, and let the Lord be thank it. Now, you all wondered if I was speaking in tongues, right? <laughs> some have food, and they can't eat, and some have none and want it, but we have food, and we can eat. So let us thank the Lord that gave it to us. And my father would say, what do you mean you're leaving? No, you're not leaving that. You're eating that. And you can be thankful it's on that table. And we'd come in from school, if, if we even dared to say, uh, he'd say, well, how was your day? Uh, I said, how was your day? We knew what that meant. It was fine, it was fine. And if we ever said we were bored, he would say, I'll give you something to be bored about. <laughs> if we ever had an attitude, bad attitude, he would say, open that door, and I'll say it in Scottish again, and have a good run round the dun foot. That's a place called the Dune Foot in, Air, in, in Scotland where I lived. And it was right along the beach. And my dad would be telling us, go for a good long run. Thank God for everything you've got, he would say. And then he would point to the, to the, the wall and say, as long as there's a cross above this door, We've got nothing to fear. Now get out there and get a, re get a real good attitude or I'll give you one. So 
being truthful about it, I can preach this because I lived it. I lived it. We wouldn't dare say negative things. And let me tell you something, you parents. If we dared to say a word against my mother, we would have literally had our mouths washed out with soap. Literally. And we knew it. Now, my mom and dad could fight like a cat and dog, but they never did it in front of us. And the only thing that was ever in our home that was discussed with high voices was the need for money. You know, when money fly, when poverty flies in the door, love flies out the window. You know, you've heard that one. But I'm trying to say something to you today, beloved. It's all in what you make it. It's all in what you make it. You can be miserable or you can be happy. And again, circumstances in life happen. And I'm not saying you're going to run around smiling and happy and, and all these other things. That's not even realistic. But just inside of you, inside of you, you can say these words, Lord, I don't like what I'm going through right now. Amen. And I don't understand it, quite frankly, Lord. Where are you? I need you to come to me. I need you to talk to me. I need you to tell me what I'm, what, what's going on here. And beloved, he will. Eventually he will. You'll look back and you'll see the hand of God. You will. Hallelujah. So we need to go ahead and declare God's goodness in our lives. I believe that the reason so many people can't see God's hand is because their attitude is in the way. It's in the way. Don't let that be you. If you will start your day off with the right attitude, I promise you one thing, God's blessings will be there for you. They will be there for you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, I'll just go for a few more minutes. Beloved, when you have the power of love instead of the love of power in your life, then you will see Matthew twenty-two thirty-nine 39 work for you, and this is what it says. Listen carefully. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, you've got to hear this. I've heard so many Christians say this to me. They can't see value, or rather they, they can see value and beauty and hope in someone else's life, but not in their own. They can believe that God has a miracle for somebody else, but not for them. See, this attitude is contrary to the Scripture. Jesus says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. How can we truly love others when we have yet to learn to accept and live in the love of God that God has bestowed on us? I truly believe what I'm saying to you. I believe that this lack of a personal knowledge of God's love is a big reason for the increasing and tragic abuse that we see today in our society. If people do not recognize and, and, and embrace the incredible value God has placed on them they will never, never, never see that value in others and treat them accordingly. God is not mad with you today. Jesus Christ paid the price on that tree. The Bible tells us that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He who knew no sin was made to be sin, that you and I might be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and walk in that. When God sees you, he sees the finished work. He sees a good attitude. He sees a person that's thankful. He sees a person that's grateful. He sees your heart. He does not look on your outward appearance. He looks on your heart. And this scripture that I gave you today gives us an example. It gives us an example. If a man loves himself 
as God loves him, nourishing and cherishing himself, he will love and cherish his wife. And a, a vice versa, if a woman knows that she's loved and cherished by God, she will love and cherish her husband. A reverse interpretation of this scripture is also true. If a man hates himself, neglects and abuses himself, he will do the same to his wife and vice versa. This scripture and this principle works in other relationships as well. With your children, in your workplace, in your community, in your church. Now I'm going to say something to you. I've lived quite a few years, beloved, and I've been in the ministry long enough to, to, to attest to what I'm saying is the gospel truth. I've dealt with a lot of situations, but I've never seen an abuser, never dealt with an abuser, and I have dealt with them. I've never seen one that liked him or herself. Not one. And that carries over into every relationship in their life. Not one. Because they need healed themselves. That's why they do what they do. They have no earthly idea how much God loves them. They have never came to that understanding. And you know, I say it and I say it and I say it. I can't say it enough because as far as I'm concerned, if you do not have this truth, if you do not have this truth, I don't know how you can walk in the Word, how you can get through every day. This is why God said it the way he said it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. Yes, that's talking about heaven. Yes, that's talking about escaping hell. We know all of that. But he wants you to have life abundantly right here, right now, through the knowledge of God so loved the world. God didn't hate the world. He loved the world. And he loves the sinner just as he loves the saint. God is love. In him there's no variable, but there's no changing. He is love. He's eternal love. And when we understand, beloved, and I have only scratched the surface of the love walk in my life, but I have the understanding to a degree. Um, it's getting more and more of how much God loves me. Now, does that give me the, you know, the license to go sin? Absolutely not. I hear this all the time. Well, not as of recent days, but many years ago, we used to, oh, that's just that greasy, gray, greasy grace message. Really? I don't think so. I'm telling you now, you don't need an excuse to sin. If you're going to sin, you're going to sin. God, this is not to say, well, God loves you. You can go do whatever you like. I don't think so. You know why? Because when you're aware of that love inside of you, when you're aware of how much he loves you, you will not hurt your father. This is, again, the way I was raised. I loved and respected my dad. He, I worshipped him in that sense. I would never even have thought of hurting him. Never have thought about it. Because I knew how much he loved me. This is, can you say this with me? My God loves me just the way I am. And if I need changed, he knows where I am. We can't change anybody. You can't change your spouse. You can't change your workmate. You can't, you can't change your family. You can pray for them, but all the time you're trying to change them, God's saying, I'm trying to change you. Yeah. I know this from experience. Well, I'm going to close up in a minute here. I want to say this to you. As I said before, I've never yet seen the abuser that ever liked himself or herself. It is not selfish 
to take care of your inner spiritual life. It's not selfish to seek God for a greater revelation of his love for you. Your personal ongoing relationship with God will bring more understanding of how much he loves you. More understanding of how much he loves you. And again, that doesn't give us a license to do whatever we want to do. We won't want to. When we know this, you won't want to. The Holy Spirit will convict you and you will say, yes, yes, Father. Thank you for stopping me. Thank you that I obeyed your voice. Thank you for your love. Thank you. He loves you. He will open up your life to a greater flow because of your revelation of how much he loves you. You will have a greater revelation to love others. To love others. His grace, as he bestowed his grace upon you, it's our responsibility to show that grace to others. To show them that grace. What they do with it is between them and God. But you show them God's love. Show them God's grace. Now, could you imagine a, a, a book that might have been written? This is only my imagination. Now. I just said it. Could you imagine somebody that, says, uh, that wrote a book with the title, Find Out How Much God Hates You? I wonder how many they would sell. That just came out of my spirit. But find out how much God loves you will be a bestseller. Because I'll tell you, if I've ever seen a generation, if I have ever seen a generation that needs to know the love of God, it's this one. It's this one. Because it's that love that will save them from all kinds of tragedies. Everything that's facing them. The enemy, see, I said this to someone this morning, the enemy has always tried and it's just a key, a key thing he does. He likes to isolate you. Yes. He likes to isolate you. He likes you to, he wants to, you to believe you're the only one going through this. Amen. You're the only one that's ever thought these thoughts. You're the only one that committed that terrible sin. That's a lie. You've all, we all have feet of clay. We all miss the mark. We all have to repent. Every single one of us. We have to hear God for ourselves. Forget about what the other person's doing. I mean, it's like the person that, you know, well, I won't go there. I, I just got a check in my spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So it's not selfish to take care of yourself you will receive that greater flow of love that you are desperately seeking from God to be able to give to others. Hallelujah. Listen to this powerful statement about attitude, and I'm going to close. Its roots are inward, but its fruit is outward. It's our best friend or our worst enemy. It's more honest and more consistent than our words. Listen carefully. It's an outward look based in past experiences. It's a thing which will draw people to us or repel them from us. It's the librarian of your past, the speaker of your present, and the prophet of your future. That's how important that little thing called attitude is. When you leave this church today, you can practice what you've heard taught. You can put a smile on your face. And I know sometimes with what, everything we're going through, and I know I'm repeating myself, but I need to. There's many times I don't feel like smiling. But I do it anyway. There's many times I don't feel like praising God, but I do it anyway. There's many times I shut my mouth when I want to open it wide, but I do it anyway. Are you hearing me? So when we leave here today, beloved, think about what you've heard. Think about what God is saying to you. 
And if you'll have the attitude of love and understanding like I've just said to you today, you will see things change in your house. You will see things change in your workplace. You will see things change in your church. There's people in the church that are hurting. They need an act of kindness. They need a good attitude. They need someone to put their arm around them and say, do you need anything today? Can I pray for you today? We need to be God's hands extended and his feet extended. This is what Christianity is all about. Knowing how much God loves you and showing that love to people that are ready and willing to receive it. Not everyone will accept you, but try anyway. Are you? I hope you got something today. I think I'm finished. I think I'm finished. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Every head bowed and every eye closed if we can. Father, I thank you today. Lord, I felt your anointing. I hear your heart. You love your people so much. Lord, I give you the praise and I give you the glory. Have your way, Lord, in all of our lives. Have your way. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. O Rita la basunda la bakaya. E sinanema Christoria titala la prosta. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. If there be one here today that does not know Jesus, you would say, I just, I need to know him today. I need a change in my life. I've got to get saved. I've got to come to God. I've had enough. If there be one here that would say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I just want to see your hand, put it up and back down again, saying, that's me. I want to have that experience today. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And I truly believe that everyone in this house is saved. I believe for great things for you from God. So let's just say this together with me as we close this service, if you will. Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name. And I thank you today for the word that I have heard. I'm going to apply that word to my life. And Lord, through your grace, through your mercy, and through your love, let me be a witness for you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. I do want to remind you